just wanted to show off my bag. And um, I think we're gonna go up this morning at a, there's a persimmon tree up there. I know y'all get tired of me messing with the persimmons, but we knocked one over up at the barn. And um, I was reading about it and those things are, the wood in them, uh, they used that in the old days, like uh, before steel and stuff, it was a hard wood. So they used it for anything they needed to be hard and it doesn't compress. So it's a real, real hard wood. So uh, I figured it might make a good mallet. So I've been wanting a mallet after I got back from Georgia's bushcraft. So I'm gonna go up there and cut me a couple of chunks out of it and I'll make a mallet that we can use when we're making uh, utensils and spoons and bow drills or whatever that we're working on. And I get to use my new haversack. And of course you can tell I got it full, but uh, pretty good. Cut me one or two more of these. We'll use these. Alright. Let's set up and see what we can do here. Oh, set my phone over there. Love this thing. My gloves. Get something to sit on. skin today. thought that'd be cool to sit on. Work on it, sit on it. The ground's a little bit damp this morning. So we're gonna have fun. We're gonna saw this little booger up and on make us a, a, a mallet to do some woodworking with. So it's gonna be fun. I thought I brought my other stuff I was gonna show you. I made some deer antler. I don't know what them things are called. You bring the scarf around your neck and you stick them through it and you pull it up tight. Uh, I seen those at Georgia Bushcraft, so I made a couple of those yesterday. But anyway, uh, let's, uh, Let's get started. Get my little saw out. And I keep calling that, I brought my more, uh, a mallet. But I think they may even call it a baton. I'm not sure, I'll have to research that a little bit more. I got way too much junk in there, as usual. All right, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come down about where I want, it's got a little bit of a crook, but I don't think it'll hurt. I'm gonna come down about where I want my handle and I'm gonna saw around it, and then I'll baton this off. So uh, I'm just gonna come down about, I don't know, we'll, we'll just do about this much. Cause it's actually, I don't need a lot of uh, the, uh, the big parts. So we'll go around right here. Let me get my gloves on. We'll just dig down ever how big around we want to handle. This is how much we'll saw all the way around. Maybe even do about a blade. Blade thickness, about how tall the blade is. Get my foot up on there, hold it. Ah. Right. See, maybe that'll be fairly close close this thing up. What I'll do now is start batoning. Around the edges, start batoning it down. Like so. See how good this works. Just take chunk after chunk. This thing's a little big, but I brought it from down there when I did that other one. See, and it'll go all the way down to where I cut, which there's a little bit of a knot there. We'll just keep doing this. 
see what we can do. It's a big chunker. Uh, you can see right there where I cut it. It's going down to that. And I got power equipment up there, but this is a fun way to do it. This way you'd have to do it if you're out camping in the woods, which is kind of what we're representing. But see, I just keep keep working on this, and then I'm going to end up with a head at the top to use. Whoop. It's pretty cool. And it's fun. A lot of people don't like this batoning, but hey, it's bushcraft. If you got a good knife, it's supposed to be okay. We're getting there. this angle over here off. I don't know if it's... Oh, yeah. It's working a little bit. I ain't gonna put my... This is a... a the blood triangle and then the... Now the death triangle in the blood circle, I think, is what uh, I learned at the thing. So this triangle right here is, diff is very dangerous when you're using a knife. And then when you're whittling, there's supposed to be a the circle that you're supposed to keep clear, like keep everybody, you know, away in case you slip. And then this is like got real critical, you know, arteries and stuff in your legs. So you always want to be careful. I'm probably not doing this right. So let's change up a little bit. Be a little bit better, maybe. Trying to go at an angle to get that. It's kind of got a knot down there at the bottom. So. Just trying to work it a little bit off. Before I start wheedling on it with my mora. Getting chunks. You know, I got a, a little axe right there. A little hatchet. That's what I need to be using. And it's sharp. Let me get it out. Gotta be careful down here in the leaves. I don't want to lose my stuff. I know it's a little one, but I was watching those guys and these little ones, man, they they done a lot of when they're sharp and they're they're thin like this one, you can do some you can do some carving with it. Anyway, I'll keep whittling on this. Just get it down to where it's just a nice handle. And then I'm going to have a real good club at the end. We're getting there. Probably supposed to carve it, but I'm going to chop. little hatchet's sharp to be a you know not to be a high dollar hatchet but it's because it's thin I think it carves good because it's, it's real thin I was reading on the other and I'm trying to learn about the I never really realized knives had different uh, like grinds on them you know for, for different things and my friends from uh, northeastern uh, bushcraft base camp real good guys and he was he was explaining all that to me the other day so i mean it's just fun to learn new skills and new knowledge from all these guys that know so much i never knew knives had different grinds for different purposes i just thought a knife was just supposed to be sharp 
So you learn new things all the time. It's getting there. Get a little bit smaller where it fits my hand. And, and this is a persimmon and it is hard. And they make golf clubs, uh, drumsticks, and um, stuff like that out of it because it's so hard. And in the old days, uh, it don't compress. It's not soft. So uh, it, uh, you know, I guess if you needed a wedge or like to split wood, or they even said they used it to, they could make like cutting tools and stuff with it. So I don't know about that, but that's what it said. But uh, it's pretty interesting. But I figured they'd make a real good uh, baton or mallet, whatever you want to call it, to do your woodcrafts with. And I got another one. I got a whole tree up there. So I may make one or two of them if it works good and take to some of the guys next year. Uh, that uh, that Georgia bushcraft has become my friends. Anyway. I guess the bark, I can knock the bark off though, so. That's a cool color on that bar. Look at that. It's unique. I wish it'd stay that color. It's pretty cool. Looks like some kind of African design or something, doesn't it? pretty good come off of a persimmon tree man it makes very good bread and pudding if you didn't see that video it, I put it up about a week ago we made some uh, persimmon pudding and some persimmon uh, I called it persimmon nut bread but it's pretty cool I got that idea from a guy that lives down there in a on the Tallapoosa River. He floated the Tallapoosa River from Georgia all the way to uh, uh, Fort Morgan. He's an incredible guy. His name's uh, uh, Harold Banks. I lost it there for a minute. His name's Harold Banks, and he's got two docu or like a PDF things on a on the uh, computer you can read, and it tells all about his experience on the canoe trip. He went to uh, down to Montgomery to Fort Toulouse the first trip, and then he got out, and then he went and continued it later. But uh, he's an incredible guy. He ought to be a writer. He's a he's good in his post inspires me to do a lot of stuff just like this uh the persimmon the stuff about this wood he always puts a lot of stuff about trees and all ever fall he just did a couple weeks ago and he was telling them about using it for golf clubs and stuff like that he's a very knowledgeable person good guy if you don't get a chance to read his uh documentaries on the inter internet uh, you can just look on facebook at his and probably message him or something and get it but uh He's a cool guy. And look, I now have a baton or mallet to start uh, when I go back to Georgia good bushcraft next year. And I got plenty of this up there so I can, look here. I won't be able to get it back out because I didn't saw it, but I mean, that is pretty cool right there. Oh, I got it. It's pretty cool wood, though, and it's going to be interesting to see because it's supposed to be hard as a rock. So uh, I'll probably make a couple of these and um, so I can carry them back to the Georgia bushcraft next year. I need to check and see if you can make a, is any good for a bow drill fire or, you know, like making friction fires. 
it's hard. So I don't know. Do a little research. If anybody knows, comment on it. And um, anyway, that's how you make a uh, baton or mallet to uh, do woodcrafting with. It's pretty simple. All you need is a saw, and you need a good knife that you can baton with. You know, so you can, you know, split that. And then just do some whittling. And um, you know, again, like this knife is more for like just cutting, and then the the mora is just like that axe. It's got a nice long uh, grind on it, and um, it's supposed to be better for you know for for whittling and grinding and stuff. And my buddy Mark Hudson from Southeastern Bush Bushcraft camp uh, was sharing all that with me he's a very knowledgeable guy too and you know, he was showing me the edges and stuff i hope i'll be glad when i get to spend more time uh oh yeah that's a lot better than like using my essie which i love my essie it's an all around good night just cool to hang around those people and learn everything learn all the new skills and you know take kids with you and they get to get interested in it and um it's just fun just like today you know had a little extra time and um you know it's all wet and damp i want to make a bow drill fire man i really like the way this thing <laughs> carves on that wood thanks mark but uh uh, get out, enjoy the outdoors, do, do do simple stuff, you know, like, you know, I made this haversack when I got back the other day. Oh, and I wanted to show you this. This is the, uh, this just goes in there and it hangs out. I want to get a black one, but it's just a mesh bag and it's tied here on the side. Well, if I get out in the woods and I want to get damp stuff that I don't want inside my haversack, or if I just want tinder, like to air out, it's just tied in there and then you just let it hang. You know, I thought that was a clever idea. You know, I'm gonna get that guy's name and show it on on one of the uh, one of my uh, videos. But anyway, let me just see something here. Let's see why we got while we're just sitting here. This is some of the stuff that the guy from Mississippi, super great guy. I'm thinking his name was Leon. I talked to him, I can't remember names. Super great guy, he, he gave me these. Let's see, it's a Vaseline, and today's a damp day. And um, I tell you, one of the tips he gave me, like a damp day like today, he saves uh, uh, yogurt tops. You know, it's that little, that aluminum. And um, you know, they're flat and small and don't take any space. Then you take that yogurt top and unfold it, and it's you know it's about that big around. It's just a little piece of tin. You could set that in water, and it'll float, and you can start a fire. So uh, anyway, let me move this down just a little bit so y'all can see. Okay, let's just play around here. Get my oh, I got a brand new uh, I got a brand new ferro rod that me and my wife when we want we won this and we won a. Uh, 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 gray, a uh, gray, is it a grayland, the water filter? Anyway, that's pretty cool. Let's see what this brand new, brand new one will do. Look at there. My old buddy from Mississippi, on a damp day, if you're ever in a bind, he gives, he give me these and he labels everything, fire starters and all that way. If something happened to me and somebody with me, you know, they could look and see stuff. So everything that you keep in your bags, you keep it, keep, he says, keep it labeled. That way, if you know, if you got a broke arm or you're unconscious, somebody's trying to keep you warm or find the first aid kit, if everything's labeled, they can find it quicker. That is pretty cool. And this, uh, that's pretty cool. 
That is beautiful. Anyway, I've got these in here too. Uh, I had a guy make these for me. Woo! I'm gonna have to move that over there. But uh, put that out. That's pretty damn. But uh, these are to put a hole in the handle. So I think what I'll do, I will. I think I'll take this and um. put a hole in this handle and it's made where you can stick a stick through it and then I when I get home if I put a piece of uh, paracord or uh, put a piece of paracord or string or leather I'll probably put leather but I don't know I might put paracord I can't make up my mind about nothing can I and since I don't have a stick I'll just put this other one through it and go through there just like this. But these work really good. If you ever uh, purchase one, I actually had these made for me. But uh, they work great. And it works good. And that's something woodworking and like crafting out in the woods, you know, you, it's hard to make a hole like this with a knife. So it's good to have these in your haversack. And it's cool if you got a walnut stained haversack like I got. <laughs> Probably better to turn the tool and not the thing that you're trying to make the hole in. I bet you guys have a kick watching me act silly. Alright, it's starting to come through the other side finally. A piece of wood would have been better. That thing is pinching me. We have to sharpen this thing. It ain't going through there like it used to. And it may just be this wood, because you know this is persimmon. It's supposed to be hard stuff. There it went. All right. Get that out. Clean it up a little bit with my mora. And then we look for some paracord that I might have and I might not have in the bag, but if not, we'll still get some. And I think I want to taper those ends off. Whew. Taper these ends a little bit. I'll do that to the top too, and around the, around that. Keep, might keep it from splitting. Need to read up on that too. There's that board. Yeah, I know. And they return a knife towards you. So. Okay. Yeah, and I'll do these around the top too. Like that. Anyway, I'll finish doing that. Won't bore y'all with it. Let's see. I don't I don't have any paracord, but I got my little neck knife, but I'll just end up uh, you know, putting a cord through it like this. Or I'll do it like this right here, like I did my my uh my knife, my uh, saw. I really like this saw. I think it's called a baka. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, it's a good saw. It's small. You know, I'll probably end up buying one of those larger ones like they was using at the uh, bushcraft gathering. But anyway, thanks for joining me today. Keep stuff straight, lined up in your life. Keep God first. And, um, you know, everything else will line up. But uh, I enjoyed you watching me. Uh, if you don't mind, hit the subscribe button. And, um, you can even hit the notifications button when I put out a new video, it'll come out. But I try to put one out each week, but like, I, because I went to the Bushcraft Gathering, come back and put two videos out on it, I've got four videos that I'm actually putting out this week. So anyway, I'll keep messing around with this thing, but it looks pretty good. And if you got comments, let me know, and on, we can work on some more, because I got a whole tree down there. Anyway, free camper out.